is seven o'clock. So let's call this meeting to order. And since we are all here in person, we do not need to take a roll call. And we currently have no attendees on Zoom. Nevertheless, our first agenda item is public comment. If there is any public comment at this point, hearing none, our next agenda item is to go over outdated bylaw revisions, of which we don't really have much. A couple of things that uh, are still uh, still in progress in some sense. Uh, Article four. Uh, Skip and Evan and me a little bit have been working on that for the last week or so. Uh, Skip has a had sent an update, a proposed update off for review by Evan. And we'll wait to see Evan's reaction to that. In brief, as I, as I understand it, compared to what we've previously discussed on Article 4, uh, Skip is proposing to delete Section 6 regarding contracts approval because Evan had pointed out that uh, the town charter gives him pretty much complete authority to negotiate and sign contracts. He does ask for select board approval in cases where he feels he needs it. So I think the semi my sense from that was that Article 6 is really, it's pre-charter stuff. Uh, same with Article yeah, 7. Yeah. Article 7 is requires 30B compliance, which we're <laughs> the law requires anyway. anyway. We don't need yeah. Article 7 to make that happen. Um, Article 8. I think you would. Uh, I was just looking at that late this afternoon. But I think uh, you 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 propose some simplification of the wording there. Oh, that's that's the, that's regarding council approving as to form. You know, you, yeah, it's because it says we're you know it says we're required in the bylaw. Well, there's nowhere in the bylaw yeah. that requires a written contract. Yeah, the uh, so you know, the the. Somewhat simplified language. Mm. You know, Evan Evan had pointed out to me in discussion a couple of weeks back that council does in fact approve contracts as to form, so that's consistent. Mm. But yeah, the, the improved language is good for that. Uh, Article nine, compared to what we've pre previously discussed, um, again going along with you know, Evans pointing out that the chart what of what the charter gives him authority to do. That uh, there is a uh, again some simplification of the language there. This is really the, the the point of Article Nine seems to be to say uh, we want town meeting approval for disposal of surplus property, but otherwise the charter gives that authority to Evan. Yeah, that first sentence is very awkward. Yes, I've I've, I've suggested an improvement to the word, a simplification of the wording there. I think we could probably just get rid of that first sentence. Yes. And my 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 suggestion. This is up for review by Skip and Evan because I sent it out and, mm -hmm. and they haven't responded to it. But my suggestion was for that section nine simply to say supplies, material, and equipment which have been declared surplus by any town agency and have a value in excess of twenty five thousand shall be disposed of only after authorization by vote of the. And then that in essence takes the language out of the charter. Yep, it puts it over here, and the only idea that we should leave in here is the twenty-five thousand dollars. Right, there. that's that's the only that's the only thing. Yeah. Be, that's the only thing that section nine adds to what the charter says. So we right. could probably just say, well, uh, well, property to be sold pursuant to section four two k of the charter. Uh, if any if any property is being sold pursuant to section and the value is over twenty-five thousand. At least, uh, I think we I think we take and put Dave's what Dave sent back to me, which you guys don't have. Yeah, that's so far. That's just been a discussion with Skip and Evan, and yeah, and I, I sort of got it roped into that as well. But yeah, yeah it's a it's a as, as simple a statement as it can be, just reflecting the language of the charter. Although I didn't, you know, I didn't propose referring explicitly to that section. Right. So I don't that way. That way, if they change the letters around the charter, but the wording stays the same, we don't have to yeah. turn around and change the bylaws or something. Yeah, I was just trying to avoid the supplies, materials, equipment, which have been declared declared surplus by any town agency. 
Then, so maybe uh, authorization by a vote of the town meeting shall be required to sell any personal property or material having a value in excess of twenty five thousand dollars. All right. For the town. Yeah, I had it simpler, but I wanted to include that the town administrator doesn't just get to get rid of old stuff. It's still got to be declared as it because it doesn't really say that in the charter. It does. That the board has to say it. Does it? it says the town administrator shall be responsible for disposal of all supplies, material, and equipment which have been declared surplus by any town agency. So then all we have to do is add the twenty-five thousand dollar requirement. And as a as a matter of routine, every year in the annual town meeting, the town meeting votes to authorize the disposal of all surplus property. So we basically do that town meeting vote every year mm -hmm. anyway. So we'll look for I mean, you know, like I said, you know, Evan, Evan has yet to weigh in on what he thinks of the yeah. proposal. So I think we'll, I mean, we're, that's that's a bit of a work in progress. But other than that, the only other <clears throat> item of substance that Skip has proposed that the rest of you haven't seen yet, that we, so I just touch on it now and we'll have to, you know, we're kind of waiting for feedback from Evan, is that there be a purchasing manual distributed. Yeah, there apparently is one. And I suspect that it's probably on the town's mainframe. Except for in, in maybe a lot of this is coming from my own experience. I've never heard or seen of it. And Nelson people don't have access to the town's mainframe to see what it is. So that 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 I'm I'm interested in Evans uh, Evans thoughts on that. Yeah, and I figured that's just as important as the bylaws, the charter, and the conflict of interest law. So yep. as basics. At, at least for those offices yep. and committees that are involved in purchasing new decisions. Hmm. Which the majority of committees probably aren't, but still you know, we'll see. I like that. Yes, we, uh, I'm interested exactly. to hear what Evan, Evan's thoughts on that are. And this is this is all being emailed anyway, so it's not a big deal <laughs> to add the yeah, so that, that's that's that was it in the end. They took out the some of the other stuff and reworked the explanations a little bit at the beginning yep. to yep. make it easier. Everything else in Article Four we've already discussed. Right. Yep. So really, these are the only open items on Article Four. Um, so pen, pen, pending Evans Evans comments, we can consider that mostly done. Yep. Yeah. With, with one we find another wording. Minor nit on that one is. Every sing, everything says a copy of the, except now for the town bylaws with amendments because that a copy of the is applied to the purchasing manual of the town. So, so you have, you have to add a copy of the <laughs> again to make it consistent with the other ones. Oh yeah, or we'll put a semicolon or whatever, and yeah, take the copy of them. yeah. So my forte was maybe remotely close to the grammar. Yeah, the purchasing made with town. They'll have an opportunity at next week's meeting to review the final wording on this. Oh, yeah. I just have one other <clears throat> item that either we had talked about in a, in a prior meeting or, or Skip, I might have just emailed this over to you. Um, in section one, I wasn't crazy about the blanket reference to in the using the acronym um, the GASB standards. Um, I thought we could replace that with something along the lines of, um, so it, it leaves in, unless otherwise provided by um, by law or uh, replace GASB standard with records retention requirements set forth by the Government Accounting um, Standards Board rather than 
um, using the abbreviation, which we don't define and, and some people might not be familiar with. Uh, but I, I'm fine sitting on that until we review the closer to final version or. I just spelled it out in this thing of a duty here. <clears throat> like as much as possible for us to get this as close to done as we possibly can this evening. Yeah. I have, let me, I have a bunch of notes on, as I got it reading through the report, a lot of them are typographical, so I'll just pass that list along to you, uh, but there are a couple things, we'll, uh, a little bit substantive to look at. Yeah, that's sort of on, on the next agenda item is we can't go over the committee report. That's the kind of thing I want to make sure we cover. They, they were in articles, so I didn't know if you wanted to do the articles first, but we can do them as part of going over that. Yeah, I, I had in mind of you know okay. going through discussing the committee report, going yep. through any 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 points that need to be made on any of the articles because the committee report now is the uh, is the representation of our proposed amendments. All right, so Article 4, you've got, some, you've got a couple notes there, Skip. Yeah, that. yeah, I did, I did some of the things here, and we'll just wait to see what he comes back yeah. with and says. It would be my preference to get rid of any duplication of stuff between the charter and this, or second yeah. up the language between the two. Yes, it's like if it doesn't actually need to be in the bylaw, throw it out. All right. Um, on Article 20, that is still up in the air. Uh, Evan is, uh, has been working with Labor Council and he's actually, they've, they've kind of gotten around to wanting to reconcile the personnel bylaw, personnel policies, personnel handbook, and there's like, it all kind of matches together. So last time I discussed it with, with Evan, Evans thinks that maybe they will have an updated Article 20 by the 19th, the date the warrant closes, but probably not sooner, and maybe maybe even not then. So, you know, and I emphasized Evan, we don't want to rush this. If if it works out best to work on updates with Article 20 and all the personnel policies and handbooks and kind of get that all done in one piece, then for our work, we can leave our Article 20 alone and leave that for future work between Evan and Labor Council and you know, consider basically just exclude that from our work in, in effect. So uh, for now, I'm not counting on getting anything at all for Article 20 uh, as part of our work. If Evan does have some, does come up with something and it looks pretty solid, uh, by the time the warrant closes, we can put that on the warrant. Because we will have a placeholder on the warrant for Article 20. So that's the current status of Article 20. The only other thing I had in focusing particularly on, on warrant, on bylaw articles, and this sort of does sort of spill into discussion of the, of the, everything that's in the committee report and maybe to go along with what Greg has, I'll, you know, I'll sort of defer this to as we go through with the committee report. So I had one. And so that basically as far as as far as bylaw articles that are the work was still in progress, that was really at four and twenty. And which unless we have something else on those two topics or, uh, brings us to uh, committee's final report. I mean, what I'd like to be able to accomplish is for us to leave the meeting tonight with the final report being considered complete with the exception of anything you know, to do with articles 4 and 20, which are still... Uh, so 
kind of working working from beginning to end on the uh, what was it? Where was that? Oh, yeah. So, anything, any comments or suggestions on the report up up through, but not including the bylaw article amendments? Yeah. So, as I was reading through one and two. I noticed a couple of things where we're a bit duplicative of her. So the committee in part one, we say the committee performed a thorough top to bottom review of every bylaw. And then in part two, we say the committee chose to undertake a thorough review of the general bylaws from top to bottom. And they both kind of pointed out certain kinds of things that we did. And I was thinking, okay, now really the I think the history and process actually belongs before the summary of proposed revisions. Yeah, the, the summary I put up front as kind of an executive summary thing. Mm -hmm. That is, if that's all you read, or it's the TLDR version okay. of the report. And often that often is called executive summary, but the, the point of that was in two pages to tell you know, to, to tell people. Everything they absolutely, everything they need to know as a minimum. So that's yes, there is a because it's kind of intended as an executive summary. Okay. It, it, that's typical for an executive summary to you know, duplicate in less detail what's contained later on. And perhaps it would be worthwhile to call it executive yeah. summary. I think executive summary would make you a better sense. Would, it would be yeah. So it's not just the summary of report, it's the summary of the entire report. I think that yeah. makes it a little yes, very you expect there'll be some more some duplication into the next section. All right. It is now called executive summary. Okay. <laughs> um if I could actually back up, I had some comments on the table of contents. Um, okay. to add a lot of value. Um so the first it looks unless it might just be a formatting issue, it looks like there might be an extra space. In the table of contents after Article One and Eleven. Oh uh, yeah, yes, those spaces that, those spaces appear in the article titles. Oh, they they can be eliminated. They don't. I've I've removed many of those, and I did not catch those too. I caught quite a number of others. Yeah. And then I had, so on Article 13, with the same comment here, and then when we get down into the meat of the articles, um, I feel like the extra definitions that gets tacked on is it's got to be just a clerical error. It is a clerical error, but it is in the current official text of the bylaws. So in the official text of the bylaws, it appears as the article title. Yeah, I actually looked that up just to make sure. <laughs> so, and, and it's it's probably worth my pointing out that this is one of one of a number of instances of you know, there are a number of places where we've either explicitly corrected an editing error or we've not flagged as a change something that uh, you know, could look like a change, but was you know was mistakenly not edited in properly. So. What I what I have done with this since we last met was I tried to call out everything we did that is a correction of an editing error. Uh, so, in other words, the the official copy of the bylaw document contains a whole bunch of editing errors, including forgetting to change one dollar to five dollars in Article 18, as an example, yeah. including a number of things in Article 25 that. We just it, you know, it messed up in a couple of places where a, a a a line from the document heading got inserted in the middle of the document text. But it, it, it occurred to me since since what the town clerk publishes is considered the official bylaws that we include in our changes everything to change the official bylaws into what they should be. But I've tried to make sure we I call those out as correcting of a past editing mistake. And that is that is that 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 bothers me too, the fact that the term yeah, all somebody just forgot to make a new paragraph after the article yeah. title and the definitions, but we're correcting that. It looks it looks odd, but that's the structure of the official document. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to know what page number your next edit was on. My next one's the bottom of page four. We reference FinCom. I think maybe just spelling out finance committee. Uh, yes, that would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's under finance committee, so that's not a... Yeah, I'm sure I mean, everybody would understand what yeah, it is. But. Yeah, so it, it, as a general rule in a document like this, I, I would prefer to see that spelled out. Yeah, it's a funny thing. I typed that <laughs> without going back and looking at it. My next one on page five, we reference Article Twenty Eight um, without the A. Yeah, I would like to do like to drop yeah. that A at some point, but uh, not now. I mean, we, we, when 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 someone goes through and, and edits numbering and all that kind of stuff, they, they might be willing to. I, I don't feel bad about dropping the A out of that one. I know why it was there, because there used to be an Article 28. 20 years ago, they removed an article and renumbered everything up through 28. Okay, yes. Uh, my next one's on page seven. Yeah, on six, first of the question, um, so section three of the charge, and just rereading this again as part of the report, um, mentions that our report will also be made available for public distribution as well as written in the town meeting warrant. Yeah. Whoops. We're not going to, we're not going to obey that. Literally. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah. That's, um, I'm quoting the charge there, and that's what they said, but yeah. yeah, it's not reasonable for us to do that. And then the last thing I'll jump in front of Greg, um, we talk about the um, meetings being videoed, and for whatever reason, I don't see the March 23rd, 2023 video either on YouTube, and it's what the reason I, I noticed it is it's not linked on the um the agenda center um to the video um so i don't know if that one got lost somewhere it could just be a thing was having somebody add it back um yeah so the video is there it's just not linked to the yeah. agenda center well i couldn't find it on youtube either so um, i don't know if, if somehow it just got taken down um i thought i actually sure. have a meeting that day we did and i couldn't but, find the wait. The meeting must have been posted at some, the video must have been posted at some point because I don't think that's one of the ones that David emailed me the video of. Uh, so I had to have done the minutes from the, the YouTube video at one point, but. Ooh. Did you, did you look them over to see if they seem to be the same or if you made them up on something else? <laughs> I don't have it. I didn't go back. <laughs> possible, possible that meeting did get video couldn't. Normally, I download a copy of the video to my computer here. And I, I know there was one meeting that we had to cancel due to lack of. We have minutes for it, so I know we have to have a meeting. Um, actually, let me double check that. Maybe the minutes. Ah, there. March 23rd. We have minutes for it. It was canceled due to lack of a quorum. There you go. Ah, so there that's you why go. we have minutes for it. That's, that's why we don't have a video. No YouTube yep. of the non existent yeah, I just found it. <laughs> I just found the email from Ryan. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Greg, you need to go in. <laughs> okay. So uh, what's next? Page seven under public engagement, fourth bullet. There should be an and between website and social media. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would help. It's always good to have more eyes looking at something. So uh, always good. To be. There's one about. Uh, remember. Okay. The bottom of page eight says the committee suggests that the town charter document, not the charter per se, the document which the charter is included. I was trying to figure out a slightly better way to say that. 
I kind of came out with it. The committee suggests that the town charter document that is currently published for public consumption on the website. I don't know if that captures everything that you know, like as a just as opposed to any kind of official document, right? Sound good, everybody? Yeah, well, just thinking of that whole distribution thing or the distribution concept of giving the charter roll to everybody, you might as well take it out of that, too. Well, yeah. sure it's it's, it's going to be the same thing, yeah. 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 How about it? So just saying the, the charter committee's report should be redacted from a copy of the, the charter because it's not part of it. So how does this sound? The committee suggests that the currently published town charter document would benefit from two changes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Anytime I can eliminate some words without destroying the meaning. Yeah. I like that. Okay, page 10 for article 12, section 12. It says perhaps someone in the town hall has to consent to signs on the common. I believe that is the town administrator's office that handles those requests. Yeah, I think they do too, because I know somebody yeah, I know I know there's a, there's a process because I know people that have done it. We just asked about it on all things uh, yeah no more than a month ago. Yeah, road race or something too. Yeah. So I can add to that. Bill and select board policy would be what appropriate, but they might have one. Yeah. I don't think they do, but whatever. <laughs> or it may just be the TA's office has a policy. Yeah. That for for Greg's that. suggestion, add to this, the town administrator's office currently handles such requests. That makes sense. Uh, I have one general thing that's not specific to any particular area. When we delete a section and mark it as section five deleted, does it make sense to delete the title as well, or do we want to explicitly keep the title? So for now, what, what do you... I, I would say keep the title of it just for people that might say we're well, keeping stuff out of it so that it might refresh some people. Oh, that's we took that out because of something. It, it just having experienced people saying stuff at past town meetings over the past. Yeah. 40 years ago I'm told. And, and along that line, going back to section forward. Yes, um, exactly. We <laughs> have the heavy equipment pool where the title is there, the line is there saying deleted by town meeting such and such. And I think we've talked about cutting that entirely out. Yes. And since that's a long ago deletion, that probably makes sense. But yeah, and I, it's long term. It's, well, and I, I don't really care one way or the other. It's just there's a food for somebody saying, well, how come we're doing all this stuff? Yeah. Right. Well, long term, we probably will be reconsidering or somebody will, not necessarily us. Yeah. We'll be reconsidering things like section numbering and sequencing. And at some point, cleaning up the formatting of the bylaws may result in eliminating those headings. But since we... Yeah. With one exception, we've said we're preserving section numbering by leaving the section number in there and noting it as deleted. The exception is when we are deleting sections at the very end of a bylaw article, we've just been deleting them. Yeah. So keeping them in there is partly to preserve section numbering. It, it for the moment. Yeah, to, to have it make sense. The, the other thought I had too is that you. Um, said something about putting at the end of the document a synopsis of whatever got changed or something. If you kind of leave the name of it there and just say deleted and then put town meeting of whatever, 
then it kind of eliminates the need to put that at the end. Right. So I yeah, I think we just need to make sure we're consistent. Yeah. Um, so which which raises the question for for some some bylaw articles when we've deleted sections that appear at the very end, we've not felt the need to preserve section numbers, so we just cross those out entirely. For consistency, do we want to leave the section numbers in with the deleted annotation? Or are we comfortable crossing them out entirely when they appear at the end of a bylaw article? I suppose it's gonna be on a case by case, like the in Article 4, we change, we do, we're deleting section 11 entirely, but really we're changing the title and right, still doing that and then split, splitting it up. Yes. But then we have like uh, notification of town clerk of office hours, written contracts, purchase of property. And we need to make sure we're consistent on leaving the section numbers, putting deleted after the section number, if that's how we're doing it. Because this one's just kind of inverted of some of that. So. I don't. I don't think that it's the articles. I think it's important to preserve those. But or am I saying it backwards? Yeah, the articles and the sections, but not the the paragraphs. I right. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about preserving numbering of subsections or paragraphs. Yeah, yeah. articles and sections. We kind of want to keep yeah. where it makes sense, where possible. Yeah. So to, to go back to one of my questions, when we have deleted a section at the very end of an article. Do we want to keep the section number with the deleted annotation? Do you, do you have an example? Of yeah, I thought I thought we like had, had done that with all of them. The treasurer collector one, we struck the office hours section. That's the last section, but we left section four deleted. Um, the same with the select board. We've deleted the clerk section. That was the last section, but we left yeah, the section. I want to say there have been some, and I don't remember. In 14, we kept it. We kept section four penalty at the end. Yeah, so let's yeah, so let's say we're, we should be consistent. Yeah, so if, if there are any that we struck completely, let's be consistent. Yeah, we'll fix that. <clears throat> let's make a note here. Yeah, section four, article six, section four, we kept it. So designation of clerk and select board, we kept it. Yeah, I'd say I'd say we're keeping it in all of them. So we might want to format four as not deleting the section, replacing it, but deleting the header and then deleting the text. Yeah, but we've also would review all of everything in here to make sure that uh, we haven't crossed out sections entirely, yeah. except when we're replacing it with something that is. I, I remember one that was sort of at the end. How about the bound volume for the selectman? No, was that at the end of that yeah. one? Yeah. yeah, and that's still there. That's oh, it's still there. there. Okay, that's. I, I'm, just, that's I'm trying court. to go through. Yeah. Oh, okay. The clerk one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now we, uh, yeah, we we kept that section number and just marked it deleted. So that's a good. That's a good idea. For, for consistency. We'll make sure that that's okay. that's that, that we don't cross out sections completely without replacing them with the same section where the sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, that's what I'll, that's everything I have up to the articles. Okay. I had a question on um, page eleven. Um, where our lead in um, for our, our proposed warrant article. Um, is see if the um, town will vote to authorize the town clerk or designate in consultation with the town administrator or designate. Would it be more appropriate to replace town administrator with town council? Since I assume it'd be town council that would be reviewing to make sure she was in agreement that the changes being made were non substantive. Um, I suppose we could look at town council as the town administrator's designate. But, yeah, I would I would expect town council to be reviewing that, you know, re to be reviewing any, you know, any, anything. The, the the combination of town clerk and town administrator basically comes from uh, the Article One. Yeah, uh, Section Article five. One, Section Five. And I thought for consistency with that, that would it would make some sense to ask town clerk to work with the town administrator. 
Yeah, so in, in practice, I had the same question on um, Article 1, Section 5. Um, in practice, I assume it's probably always going to be the, the town council that's stepping in. So whether they're doing it because that's what's called out or because they're, they've been designated by the, the town administrator, it's probably six and one half dozen in the other. Yeah, I, I would imagine that the town clerk and town administrator will work together to make something that is then sent to town council. And it's kind of actually borne out by the website, which lists the bylaws and the charter under both town administrator and town clerk. So they're both in some way responsible okay. for it. All right, so getting into the bylaws themselves. I think uh, I did go through earlier this week double checking for gendered pronouns, and I found I think three instances that we had previously missed. And so, in in my working copy of the report, those have been updated. Oh, I, I also found a, a few cases where the red and green highlighting wasn't covering exactly the right. I, I have to be really picky about the red and green highlighting because for the purpose of validating that our we are accurately representing the existing bylaw text, I go through and cut, select and cut all the added text. What I'm left with should exactly match the bylaw document. <laughs> and when the when the highlighting doesn't cover all the spaces correctly, I end up with too few or too many. I end up either with word, words matched together or extra spacing. Okay. So, and likewise, I would I'd go through and then select and cut all the old text and make sure that the new text doesn't have any messed up spacing or words matched together. And I think I've caught a few more instances of where there's like the insertion of just a comma, which by itself is almost impossible to see. So I've, yeah. I've combined combined such things with the with the preceding word. And so represented it as a delete the word and add the same word with a comma after it, so it's easier to read. It. So I've caught a few of those. There there may still be some more. For as many times as I read through it, every time I read through it, I see something else. Yeah. So all of my changes are by article and section number. So I, my next one my was actually on the same page as Brian's. So you got article two, section 15. Yeah. Um, so the moderator shall let's find it. So the moderator shall declare the Right now, it's just declare the vote. Um, and I was thinking maybe it, just to clarify, um, could we insert result of the, um, so it'd be Where? moderator shall declare the result of the vote. Where is that? Uh, so the second line of section 15. Ah. Result Which is actually right. kind of redundant with the the moderator will announce the tally of the right at the end. end. <laughs> so the yeah, as it appears to him, strike was from council. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's probably okay like that. But yeah, the the tally of the vote is applicable only with the electronic voting. Okay. I, in my main concern was I wouldn't want it misconstrued to be just, you know, the, the moderator shall declare the vote. It's like, well, could somebody misinterpret that as just, you know, simply calling for the vote um, as opposed to announcing the outcome of the vote. So we're going to start a result of. Uh, hey, yeah, to make it in statement in English, but I yeah. can see the declare the vote. Yeah, the vote yeah. has been taken. I'm declaring who won the vote. Yeah. You know, in a strict sense, that 
quite be the same thing. Yeah, I think probably for clarity, it helps to helps to spell it out just a little bit more. The moderator shall declare the result of it. I think in, in probably in language that maybe comes from town meeting time, declare the vote has that meaning. Yeah, it yeah. comes like from Robert's rules. The chair proceeds to announce or declare the vote. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a Robert's Rules of Order thing. I'm fine updating it. Yeah. For, for, for the people reading this who aren't familiar with Robert's Rules yeah. terminology. So my note in that section is uh, in one of the added sections at the moderator's discretion, instead of the show and hands and standing vote to provide, there should be a comma between vote and to provide. So. Yeah, that's on my list. Yes. I definitely agree a comma belongs there. The only other question I had there, so almost the next line. Um, the count shall be made available to the town clerk for recording purposes. Do we want to specify, obviously, um, we're, we're only going to have a count in a situation where the electronic handset, the electronic voting system is being used. So do we want to specify that the count returned by an election uh, electronic voting system um, shall be made available to so that we don't want to imply that Don or any moderator needs to count every vote that's not being conducted through the electronic voting system? I think that the only time that you take a count is in the case of a standing vote or an electronic vote. Yes. So you, you, the sense, yeah. so it's like there's, there's, there's two things here. Yeah. There's an actual vote or the sense of the meeting. Either of those, there would be the vote. Yep. So really, if we made a separate paragraph in front of an electronic voting system that might make that clear that whole thing clearer but no not no. a different section just a different paragraph no because the other time you're going to take account is if the moderator's sense of the meeting as they determine by approximation is not accepted and somebody challenges it then you have to vote have a standing vote yeah you have two forms of vote that are counted. You have, you have three forms of vote yep. that are counted. Standing vote, electronic right. vote, and paper ballot vote. Right. So in all cases, the count should be made available to the town clerk. Okay. Right. So the that particular sentence, the count should be made available to the town clerk for reporting purposes, is was added specifically to, as we removed, that provides to the moderator and town clerk an accurate count of the A's and nays on each of each question. So the council asked us to remove that provides to the moderator and town clerk. I felt we still needed to have that available to the town clerk, so I added that sentence. So that was specifically added for electronic handset voting. Yes, it, it, it should be for both. I, I don't know if it that that requires that a standing vote a stand, standing votes are always counted yeah but put, think of it this way however the votes are counted the town clerk is going to record the count right yeah. because they're going to be announced by the moderator right. at the meeting and, and we probably don't need to say that here because it's going to happen that's part of the town clerk's responsibility yeah. in recording the uh yeah, it, it, so but my thing there was if this is measuring the vote. So if you're going to peel off the electronic one, then you want to peel off the standing vote if you want to have them both recorded. Uh, I am not as concerned about that. I specific, put that in so, specifically so that with the electronic voting system, the, the clerk gets the count. Right. And they should also get it with the other one. But that, that it, it's kind of odd because they're going to announce them either way. Because what in the old days when we did a standing count, they'd be sitting up there doing the math and then say, I declare the vote carried by 
the necessary two thirds by 250 to seven or something like that. So they would, the count actually gets written into the median. No matter how the votes are counted, the count is always, I'll mention an exception in a moment, but no matter how the vote is counted, the voting, the, the numbers for a counted vote are always reported by the moderator and recorded by the town clerk. One exception to that was one of the first meetings we did with the clickers. Or, and I, this is probably, was probably for, for all votes that were taken with the clickers where it was a simple majority requirement. Ray did not announce the count. Although I think he did announce the count when it was a two thirds. So that, you know, that's the only time that I can think of in my memory when votes have been counted and the count was not announced by the moderator. Yeah. They, most of okay, the time, so, so all right, well, not that this requires a whole lot of deliberation, but I could see where this would be coming from, from the electronic voting concept so i i would imagine what ray was doing was it's the same thing as a show of hands exactly. so if i see the thing in you know because we sit right right behind the thing and you see this little red spot here and then the rest of it's all green yeah. well the hands are clear for the majority i'm not announcing right. the vote yeah the moderator is not not counting hands mm. the moderator is looking at the show of hands and right and then and if the, if the show of hands doesn't doesn't produce a clear result, then the moderator goes with standing count. And if someone really wants to, they they ballot go to the printed and the ballot. But we you know, even in here we say in section sixteen that electronic system suffices yeah. for a printed ballot. Right. But in any case, the question for us here is: Do we need to say here? That the count shall be made available to the town clerk for reporting purposes. If we say the moderators will announce the tally of each vote, then we're probably okay without it. I just, yeah, I, I felt a little re removing the providing to the town clerk part. But if we say that the moderator will announce the tally, then that might be okay. Because that that's that's what council said. They strike that provides the moderator and town clerk, and didn't add that. I kind of hashed on that a little bit. I'd be fine yeah. with taking yeah. that out. It, 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 jumping back into a little bit of the Wayback Machine, I don't want to digress too far, but we used to have a stenographer doing these. The stenographer would hear it. We don't use a stenographer because they're all recorded now. So the votes are all going to be, you know, when she announces them, that's it. So that's recorded. And if somebody wants a transcript of the town meeting, then they're going to have to go on there and type up a transcript from the recording. At least I haven't seen a stenographer sitting in the middle of the, <laughs> the audience and no. have her raise her hand, tell people to shut up so she can listen. So what if we remove that sentence and make the next one? The moderator will announce the, ac the accurate count after close of voting. So the accurate count from within from the previous sentence. Yeah. Or even the electronic voting system may be used with moderation discretion, so the show of hands and standing vote to provide an accurate count of the yeas and nays on each question, and the moderator will announce the accurate the count. The results of the accurate account. Well, yeah, whatever you yeah. And then get rid of just like the green, the uncolored, and then the green. Or what if in, instead of tally, I don't know if we need accurate again, but just to use the same terminology, the moderator will announce the count of each vote. Or and, and comma on each question, comma, and the moderator will announce that count. Yeah. Or comma as Oop. announced by the moderator. Or Oop. so is Dave, are you making changes to your draft document? Yep. Just the <laughs> I think the best option that sounds that good to hear. Yeah, I think that one once the edits are actually made, that uh, we can just go with. So are we saying here 
Oops. To provide an accurate count of the A's and A's on each question, and the moderator will announce the count after it closes the building. Sure. Yep. Sounds great. All right. <laughs> now I gotta make sure that I can get this captured in the correct highlighting here. Mm -hmm. In the sentence that says the count shall be made available at the town clerk for recording purposes. Wording will now be. To provide an accurate count of the A's and A's on each question, and the moderator will announce the count after close of voting. Success. Oh, I'm good with that. Yeah, I think. Does anybody else have any? All right, what's next? My next substantive one is on page 30. Uh, anything before that? Not substantive. But on mm. page 21 um, in the intro box for Article 3, um, should the first letter of each line be capitalized? Oh, it looks like it because there's capitalization later on, at least in the first section. Thank you. Section 21. Article 3. Yeah. You know, section 1. Page 21. Yeah. yeah consolidate. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of thinking of the, it kind of leads into a sentence, but. It, you know, it, uh, it, this, this isn't as important because yeah. this doesn't mean anything. It's just trying to let people know. Yeah. Yeah. No, we should stick it away. I think I, I didn't capitalize them because I had the section title in front of me. That's yeah. And okay, I think just leaving it as is. Sure. Okay. So page twenty seven. Uh, this is Article Seven, uh, Section Five. Uh, didn't know if there was any better header for this than employment of competent persons and filing of notes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Seems to be, yeah, maybe just town meeting records or something along those lines. It's, you don't really see how it fits yes, this section or It's all and only about town meeting records. Yeah. yeah it, it, How about that must have been changed multiple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know that, that that goes way back. Yeah. How about records of town meeting or record of town meeting? Yeah, yeah. and it just yeah, just put that. And then so as part of my notes there, I have that comma after means should go away as well. That should be part of the deleted text. Yes, that comma either disappears or there is a comma after by record yes. by comma no to re after record. record comma by electronic or other means. Yeah, I, I went with uh, stick the comma in with the other part of the deleted text because that's easier. 
it's easier it makes it have any sense I, yeah. I, I, I don't know that the uh, a, a comma phrase or is useful yeah in, in the next section the added text um, above what used to be the the fee schedule um, it talks about the copy of the fees shall be posted and shall be available in the office of the town clerk. We don't specify what the posting requirement is, um, and no wonder if we even need it. Um, if we could strike the posting yep. reference and just say it's available in the office of the town clerk. You you want to put it there, or you want to put it posted on the um, or on the on the town's website? It is in fact posted on the town's it, website. It, I I thought. I had come across it there. Yes. That's why I was just going to see so how quickly was, I could open it up. It's just sort of generically saying it shall be posted. That kind of leaves it posted somewhere. We're not saying where. Yeah. That's supposed to be fine with posting yeah. on the website. You want to specify it on the, on the website? Yeah, on whatever phrase you used in the other place, the official town of the website or whatever. Spell Grafton correctly. <laughs> shall be posted on the official website of the town of Grafton and shall be available in the office of the town clerk. And that's existing practice, so. Yeah. Yeah. And good into uh, Article 12. Okay. Uh, Article 8, Section 3, page 30, custody of grants, but then talks about contracts or grants. Okay. That would be copies of all grants would be fine because under In Article, four, we Article four, where everybody has to give their contracts to the town accountant anyways. Okay. In a separate place. So that's talking about something different. And then so if we drop contracts or from that right. green section, yeah. then the title is good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Copies of all grants must okay. be submitted to the town account. Our next one is 1222. Oops. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, before that, okay. um, Dave, on page 39, the very bottom, uh, I wonder if we could just tweak the pagination. It's the right now the page ends with a colon and a lead into the oh bounce applicants down. I wonder if there's enough room at the bottom of page 40 for it. Probably. Oh uh, yeah. No, that's I just told word to keep that paragraph with an app. Okay. Um good for a while. Uh article 1222. After the second time we use a road opening permit, we added issued by the Department of Public Works. Is that also required for the first road opening permit two lines earlier? Oops, that would be preferable. Or since we have two, two things talking about a road opening permit, we might want to say just once, road, road opening permits shall be issued by Department of Public Works. Do you want to end the section with that? Yes. <clears throat> the next is section 28B on page 47. <laughs> And just fixing the road opening permits here. Yeah. Okay. 
that was which section? 28B. 28B. Uh, we're dropping thin film single use plastic from the very beginning of that line. So now it's just a single use carry out bags. So it's no longer restricted to be plastic. Oh, I'm not sure that change is actually needed. It, so is there any anything else that's other than then film single use bags? You, you would, could, it be, would it be? Yeah, this, this paper, paper, paper bags could be considered just as single use as thin film plastic. Yeah, I, I, so yeah, I just didn't know. Yeah, I think this is this is in line with the intent here that there were there were so many different terms used for the, the bags that were to be prohibited. And this is in, the idea. So I'll go back to leaving it as single film. Single, single. carry out bags do not include recycling okay, so, paper bags. Okay, so there's a definition that I met that I just skipped over in the previous sentence. So single use carry out bag is a defined term. Yes. So put a hyphen in there. Right. And uh will be good. Yeah, we had thin thin film single use plastic carry out bags. We had Reusable shopping bags. We had reusable checkout bags. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. Now that that kind of goes back to something we had talked about before. Yeah. Putting single use carry out bags, bold it. Yeah, because it's defined someplace within the the bylaw, but you know, so the. And I didn't catch that it was a definition, a defined yeah. term, because it's at the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. So the, the capitalization didn't stand out. Okay. My next substantive thing is not until Article 37. So, Brian, I think you're up. I'm good until page 65. I'm at 141, so go for it. <laughs> Actually, so 65 was the $1, $5 thing. Um, okay. I'm wondering if it needed to be marked, but I think our based on our prior conversation, whether it's a clerical error or not, we're marking it if it's a change from the currently published version. Yeah, and in the in the comment box at the top there, I specifically call that out. It was, the change was approved at the October 2303 town meeting, but not reflected in the official version of the bylaws. And I'm good until Article 26 on page 90. Oh, and this is mine. This might have been a update, but um, we've got lettered A, B, C, D in yeah. front of the section numbers. Yeah, yeah I have a, a, a bit of a bigger issue with Article 26. In reviewing this this week, reviewing that Attorney General decision that I forwarded to you, Brian. And I got, after rereading that a couple of times, I got that the Attorney General thinks that a bylaw like this, that the, the state basically dictates to you exactly what that bylaw should say. You know, they, they tweet to the town of Warren for not including everything that the uh, Chapter 40, Section 57 said, and including things that Chapter 40, Section 57 didn't include. So, based on that, and further reflection, I think probably what we should be doing here is pretty much preserving Article 26 as is. There are a few changes that need to be made for typos for updating it to be consistent with chapter with section 57 currently. And I would expand upon the work item that we're to future work item that we're talking about to you know to you know, more deeply explore the relationship with the select board certificate of good standing policy and this 
because there's a question in my mind, and I I, I would rely on counsel to answer this, uh, is whether the certificate of good standing policy is consistent with state law. If this is the only way state law gives us to deal with licenses and permits of term for taxpayers, then the certificate of good standing policy may be ineffective. On the other hand, that policy may have a basis in law that sort of sidesteps this. It might even call in question whether we need this. But that's not a question that we can answer now, right? given the time available to us. Yeah, and, and well, and I had that question too, because I remember last, that was the last meeting of the meeting before we had talked about um, reverting this back to basically the original. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think we've got the wrong version of the bylaw it currently in the report. Um, because I had sent one back to you that I think it mirrors Mass General Law, with the exception of I think I used our reference for a treasurer collector in, in place of, um, yeah, if that's, well, that's just tax that's collector. True, then I somehow missed that. Let me let's uh, see if I've got that. Yeah, I, it's entirely possible that I put the wrong thing in here. So I need about 30 monitors to keep track of all your stuff. Oh, um, so I decided to edit my, my edit so that I don't need a second monitor. How is that just the most efficient way? I was, I came this close to printing out the entire thing and just reviewing it in hard copy. It's like, oh, I can't justify that. I hate to say it, but I, my first run through, I did that. Yeah. And I, can't, I, I put it together in a three ring binder with all the stuff I had written down all over it. And then as we went through the first couple of meetings, we're writing more and more. Yeah, that's. I can only find one article twenty six in my email from June. Yeah, this is one I had, I had just sent back to Dave. Okay, um, but I can actually yeah I don't send it to all of us. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I I had filed it. I had filed your update, Brian, in the wrong place. Oh. So I will put your update into the document here. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think your your update is. I'm glad you mentioned that, Brian, because yes, I misfiled the I misfiled your update. So yeah, your update is. Yeah, that's the. Well, I was wanting to scratch my head on that. So I it vaguely remembered that we'd updated that, but the, yes, I just dropped it into the wrong folder. And then when it came time to put this report together, I picked the old copy up. Good. So yeah, I think we're good on that. And never, never mind what your current version of the committee report says about Article <laughs> Twenty Six. Never mind. Well, the nice thing about it is once you go through and do this stuff, you can send another copy out. It's not like wasting everything. We could just delete this copy. Yep. So, like I mentioned, Article 27, there's some really weird indentation under definitions. Is oh, yeah. Saying. That we will take care of, Article 27. And should we update the... Uh, no, don't say it. The reference to BOS. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't defined a select board, but BOS doesn't really... <laughs> Yeah. That I would be happy to leave that to whoever does the editorial update afterwards. Well, we'll I notice there, there are there are limits to what I'm willing to do here at, mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah, it was just more as it it looks weird, people might not realize that it's actually coming from the bylaw. That's 
That's the only reason I even thought about it. Uh, that is EOSU day. That's what I was wondering if they say biosafety and blah, 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 the most current edition of biosafety and micro. What oh, if yeah. they ever have something that's published that yes. says Florida Select? Yeah. It is used. The US is used. Yeah. Only twice. But yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's used sentences. only twice in one, two consecutive sentences. Yeah. That I think. Can we strike the whole thing and just say select board in those two spots? We could perfectly well eliminate that abbreviation. Consider it done. I was kind of surprised they, they felt the need to define DNA. But <laughs> I, <laughs> well, who wrote it? Yeah. They may have been old enough that DNA wasn't in the public uh, yeah. so. <laughs> domain. Um, let's get them. Delete. Keep that definition. We don't need it anymore. Yeah, I think we went out. Of, somebody went out of their way to. They got. They got acronym happy here. <laughs> well. Unless for some strange reason. Yeah. These things are to be a way to on the other hand appears in there's like 17 or 16 occurrences of it besides the definition itself. But we don't need to I'm comfortable. <laughs> I just I just changed the BOS because that was an easy change. Where do we go next? My next thing is the illicit discharge bylaw. Page 141. Section 13, the transitional provisions kind of don't make any sense and are well expired. So yeah. <laughs> just torch it. <laughs> it says you have 90 days if you can show a good cause. Well, if you can't show a good cause, well, what happens then? Well, <laughs> keep on discharging. Yeah. All right, so we will do to that. What well, we've done with the immediately preceding section. Then. Done. Okay, that's what I've got for those. My last comment is Article 40 between pages 145 and 146. My favorite table. Is that a different font than the rest of the article? It looks larger, but I don't know if it's just the yeah, it's the table. table. I'll make that consistent. consistent. And it'll take up less space that way. Yeah. <clears throat> that I'm done. There's some pokey space in too. But the fun name uh, towards the bottom of the current page 145. If we're evolving and then fund, I don't know if it's like a hard return versus a stop return. Same thing, extended services were only fun below it. They just said, Yeah, there's probably a new line in there as opposed to wrapping. Yes, I'm just, I'm just catching it. Fixing that. Something I did not previously look at. Well, I can make or break a bylaws, but there's a few. I'm going to vote no if that doesn't get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> your vote will not count. Paragraph marks embedded in the. Uh, yeah, if anybody on this article committee article. votes against <laughs> any of these bylaw changes, the clicker is going to melt to their hand. <laughs> There's pictures that we're yeah, going to I guess. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting new clickers. And yeah. I'll, I'll have to make sure that yes. they have that feature built in. Just <laughs> <laughs> skip stand up in the we, audience, walk over. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, a wooden mallet. We will we'll track which clicker is assigned to which person. Right. And so we'll be able to target that. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get clickers with the reinforcement option. Okay. Yeah. Oh, don't even okay. joke about tracking who they're assigned to. No. <laughs> We've been through that already. Go to a ballot vote. Okay, so that that looks better. Was so a consistent bond and with no extra paragraph marks on Article Forty. Anything else? I'm done. Article Forty, Article Forty One. So what I have to do on this report is put the correct Article 26 in and wait for an Article 20, Article 4. We'll put that in when we we'll yeah, kind of look at that down tomorrow, Monday. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you hand it off to Evan. We'll yeah. Wait for Evan's feedback. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't see him wanting to do anything other than the the purchasing thing. Yeah. We let him know he's holding up a 160 page document. Yes. <laughs> that and the um, personnel bylaw, if that's just going to be yeah, the personnel bylaw. Put that, it's probably it's probably best to just. Yeah. My gut feeling is future. take the time to work the personnel bylaw and all the policies and handbooks and take the time to get to work that all together, get it all lined up, and then bring an updated personnel bylaw to the May time meeting. This is clearly it's it's turned out to be a lot more work than Evan thought it would be. You know, the more they got into it, the more they see they've got three employee contracts that they're trying to line up to against one another. The employee handbook, the personal bylaw. You know, I don't know if they have any personnel policies as distinct from the handbook, but whatever. Got time to look at the whole thing and get it all played yeah, right. nicely. In option, and I don't know if Labor Council or Evan would be able to even do this in time, but if we're not going to do anything with Article 20, would it make sense to just see if town meeting would go for the streamlined version that council suggested to leave a lot of the authority with Evan? Um, and so if that results in an extremely streamlined version of the bylaw, I don't know if they could get that done in time. But our biggest hesitate or one of our hesitations was not knowing if town meeting would go for it, it was ready for it. Um, yeah, I do not think it would be. I don't think it would be advisable. I think there still would probably be a bunch of resistance to putting what might be conceived as too much power into one person's hands. And my, my only thought process was worst case scenario, it gets voted down and we're in the same spot we're going to be if we don't do anything. Yeah, I, it's my sense that we are not likely to get something worth voting on in time. Right. I, I, I think we wait for that. Yeah. That, that, like I said, I'd, I'd rather wait for that to be, for, for them to get it Get it figured out, get it done the way they really think it should be. You know, the right mix of bylaw and policy and procedures and all that. Get get all of that kind of lined up together right. the way it, the way it ideally should be, and then we can deal with yeah, it. Yeah, because then you might have to turn around and undo it once they're all done with that, anyways. Yeah, it, it's remember when we used to have off the personal committee and all that stuff. Oh yeah, what. We had a lot more stuff on. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just in case you guys didn't notice, Greg found a, the the two warrant the two bylaw articles that we thought we weren't changing. Now they changed. And Thirty eight. Greg found some changes for those. Nicely so, done. So that avoided the question of 
how do we write the warrant article for a bylaw that we're not yeah, changing? Well, it would make some changes. Yeah, we, we are now facing that you, question you look, again you look, Article 20. You, you, you look hard enough, you can find something to change. You know? yeah. I, I had some, I had three comments on uh, Article 20, one of which will still be worth applying if we don't have anything else. So. Yeah, yeah, well, I, you know, that thought had crossed my mind. If we found one change to make in Article 20, it, it would be yeah, be easy. Yeah, yeah well, it'd be a lot easier to. We, we could go back to the open I, the action items list. I mean, I think you know, yeah, Greg certainly. Have, I'm sure um, a handful of us have proposed certain other changes outside of whatever's been working on with council. Yeah. So if we have if we, right, so we we have some you know, essentially minor tweaks to it, but at least. We've got something, right. something to vote on. And There's something to vote on and keep the, the Warren articles numbered the same as this so nobody loses. Yeah. And I will, in, in connection with that, going back to uh, part three of the report recommended follow up, I will add Article 20 to that. And say that a, de a, a more detailed revision of the personal bylaw, we recommend that that be undertaken in conjunction with the updates of other personnel policies etc some yeah some wording along that line to basically say we're we're punting on all the details of article 20 um, because it deserves attention focused attention um uh, i've sent my comments to the committee one was about some weird wording in the holidays and the other two one was we should work with labor council to clean up this awkward wording. And the other one was, is this affected by the new pay scale? So those two probably we can't do anything with, but that other one you could. Yeah, so we'll, 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 look for, we'll look for a couple of tweaks, uh, one or two tweaks to Article 20, just so we can, just so we aren't faced with the problem of how do we write a warrant article when we're not actually proposing yeah, change? There's a warrant article we propose to do nothing. The Finance yes. Committee requests that this be <laughs> passed over. <laughs> okay. So I, I have a question on Article 19 that I had written down for oh. one of the nights I was going to be here for, but wasn't able to come. And it has to do with the betterments. Why, why would you want to do a betterment based on the number of parcels on the street instead of the linear feet. Because there, there were two different ways of it, it left in there and it didn't. But I, I suppose I could see if somebody had a small piece feeling underrepresented. Yeah, betterments are generally related to Frontage, linear feet of frontage. Yeah, it, it, so what is that? Yeah. It's K in nineteen, section one K in nineteen. And I'm just, I was kind of wondering if I was missing something other than that. Assessments shall be made based on either the fixed uniform rate method using the linear frontage of each lot on the street as the standard for computation or the uniform unit method pursuant to which each existing or potential lot shall constitute. So basically, this is the language evidence proposing, you know, giving them a choice of which way to do the betterments. To me, that seems like if I owned, say, 9,999 linear feet of the project, I would say, well, if, and I had two parcels of land and you own one parcel of land, I would say, I'm going to do the unit cost and you'll pay a third and I'll pay two thirds. Yeah. To you, it's up yeah, this is up to this is up to town meeting to decide how the betterments are going to be assessed. Which which method of assessing betterments? It just seems silly doing that, and I I'm, I'm just okay. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I'm assuming, and I don't know this for a fact, that that these two alternative methods of assessing betterments are both relatively commonly used and generally accepted. I'm much more familiar with you the know, linear feed method. Yeah. So, in G, the select board does it. The select board reviews a public meeting within 21 days of the request and make a decision on the request within 45 days. So, it doesn't even go to a town meeting. Right. Yeah, where you're right. In in L it's for repairs that are authorized by town meeting. But in G it's the select board and the in in G it doesn't specify the method of assessing betterments. Yeah. Talks about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an easement. I don't know. It just struck me as an odd thing. I didn't know if you guys had dabbled anything about it or could think of something I wasn't <laughs> thinking of. Yeah. So that's my sole question. Yeah. Oh, what else do I have here? On the uh, committee report. Part six the proposed charter changes, and I think pretty much this just I updated this to reflect what we uh, what we were discussed the other day of including only the sections in which there are changes. I think we uh, debated whether to include anything from Article Eight, simply say it's to be deleted, but I thought probably better to include. All the cross out text so people knew. So anybody reading well will know what we're proposing to delete. Other than that, there's really nothing. Nothing has changed in here other than how much we include in the document. I think I, I might include less of section 4 2 because there's Two pages of no changes. Yeah. So maybe stop after 4 2B. Yeah, I Yeah, there's no article four is even in here. Oh, that's what you were saying. Duh. Never mind. Yep. Oh. Yeah, we didn't we didn't see any need to include the entire it's, charter in here. Like right. Unlike the bylaws where we you know, are including yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, folks, a good a good yeah. understanding of because <laughs> for the most part we've got changes scattered throughout the bylaws. There are not many pages that don't have changes on like the charter or we're only doing some small things. So with that, 
I think our our committee report is solid except for articles four and twenty and twenty six. We'll throw those in there and we'll and that's this it's important to consider this complete because that gets us on to our next topic. I think it's the next topic. Warned articles for town meeting, yes. Yeah. So I certainly we discussed last time a, a, a small sample set of warned articles with some ideas for how we how best to present warned articles. And now that I have with a with a complete report, I can take all the bylaw articles from this report, transform them into a set of warrant articles, um, and based on our discussion last time, there's sort of fundamentally two ways to include the warrant, include the bylaw article in the warrant. One is to reproduce the entire bylaw or bylaw article with adds and deletes, which is appropriate for articles where we're changing just about every section or whether it's such you know it's like half a page or less than a page and we're changing more than one place in it so where it's where the presentation of the complete bylaw article with ads and deletes doesn't take up excessive space we'll, we'll put it together that way in other cases my starting point will be when I put this together for for us to review. I think may, our task next week will be mainly to finalize our warrant so that we can get it to the select board truth because they will be meeting on the 14th. They'll be closing the warrant on the 19th. We'll be starting finance community review on the 20th. Okay. So basically, we have to have our, our finalized warrant articles done at the next meeting. So in preparation for that, as I was starting to say, I'll take the bio articles out of the report, transform them into, into warrant articles. And I went through and I counted about 22 out of the 41 warrant articles that probably best will best be included in their entirety in the warrant. Either they're small or they've got changes throughout. Another 18. I'm not including, haven't counted 20 yet, so I don't know which way that's going to fall. But another 18 seem to deserve to be presented as just the sections of the bylaw article that have changes. So that's kind of what I'll, you know, that'll be, that'll be what I what I put together for our for our review at the next meeting. Should be able to get that out very early in the week. Uh, beyond that, those articles that where we're going to be including only the change sections, we will, in some cases, want to further refine those to, instead of, here's the whole section with changes, we may want to say, and I think we had an example of that last week, where there was one that looked like it would make sense just to you know, delete item F from section, section, and such. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to further, further condense that down where we see an opportunity to simply say, delete this section, or replace these words with those words here, something like that. So we can think the goal will be to try to condense it down to something smaller, but still, as we noted last week, we want the people who read the warrant to have enough context so they can kind of understand what's being done. Mm -hmm. the, they should have it because we should be, when we do the, presentation of the stuff at the meeting, I think what we ought to be doing is putting the whole page up on the screen with the, the comments and stuff like that, with the crossed out parts and stuff like that. Well, if we're doing a consent agenda for the whole thing, then we're not going to present the Well, it, right. But when you do the Warren articles, if people then by way of explanation, if somebody wants to put a hold on some of them, mm -hmm. we have those to put up there yeah. that should really be self-explanatory. And that they will do a great job of guiding the town meeting through it. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of the committee report is going to be to, in in advance of town meeting, and we want to be publishing this. Basically, I think 
at, at our next meeting, we should be able to say the report is complete. Yeah, yeah. And we should be able to say that by the time by the time we're done with our next meeting, we'll be able to say the report is complete, and the warrant articles are ready to be ready to go on. Yep. And, and, but once we say the report is complete, we'll be putting that report up on our website mm -hmm. and attempt to, attempting to publicize it. So hey. Read read this if you really want to know everything we've yeah. done. And we'll expect everybody who attends the finance committee hearings to have read and thoroughly digested the report. Like it to whoever you went over that. <laughs> so kind of related to that, I took a shot at doing the uh, the charter amendments like that. So this is I worked on it, just came up with similar articles for the uh, And I, I left just for space. I left off the petition of the legislature thing just so it would fit on one page. So I found um, Amy was saying she had. I was asking her about it. She said she had no context because she didn't know what Article Three, Section Three, Four was. So I tried to add some of the the titles in there and to make it clear, like we're moving from Three Four to Three Eight, that this is a completely separate topic in the same article. And trying to keep enough of the context around there that, yeah, it makes sense and these, that they can see what has changed without having to see a whole lot, mm -hmm. a whole lot more. And oh, she pointed out uh, another typo kind of thing in 3 3 2. Other members of multiple members' bodies. So, multiple members' bodies. Yes. So, I put in a correction to multiple dash member. Although I think we actually use multi-member bodies in the rest of the thing. So we could probably look at that and clean that one up. I tried to find like, okay, this this it's a it's a small change, but it gives us enough of the context around it that someone can look at just this and make sense of it. Because mm -hmm. I assume these these ones will be voted individually. Yes, yeah. we, had, yeah. we had discussed having these three charter amendments, three separate warrant articles. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, I meant, yeah, so these three articles as opposed to these three articles in a consent motion. So. Right. Yeah, because I was, I was looking at the uh, the one that says delete the delete this section in its, in its entirety and inserting in place a new section, which really gives the the people voting no context unless they know what the existing one was. Was well, so, right. Yeah. yeah, and it's the the language delete this section and insert this section in its place comes from the previous warrant articles that have. Requested the state legislature to fix our charter. Yeah, so that's that's where I drew that language from directly from you know, modeling those articles. Doesn't mean we have to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. So this was just a a, a possible alternative. Yeah, I really like this. I, yeah, I, I I like it. It's shorter. It's clearer as to what's being changed. The other warrant article. Any other comments on the charter? So this general, um, I guess, pertain both this and and what we'll have after the next meeting for for everything else. Um, does council need to review everything before the select board closes the warrant on Tuesday? I think not positive, but I think council reviews the warrant after it's been closed. Not sure about that. But in any case, I mean, well, let me put it this way. The day the warrant closes is the last day to submit articles to be right. on the warrant. Yeah, they say. So you can't assume. Yeah, and they, and they have until 14 days before the meeting to publish it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think you know, once the warrant is closed, then that's everything that's going to be on the warrant. Council, the council will then be reviewing that I do not know the extent to which council reviews the language of the warrant 
The council I know is involved in preparing motions. Yeah, but it will be more ruling things in and out of order. Yeah. But any any small changes that might be made because of any kind of editorial stuff, we can change that and present something that's different at the town meeting as long as it generally has to do with whatever we put in the warrant mm -hmm. anyways. Something to many people's chagrin. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's proceed to about, about half of our warrant articles. Let's propose I'm telling for alternative language. That'll make everybody happy. Okay, so I'll, I'll fix I'll fix my draft warrant article for the charter up yeah, I I moved that into that folder. Okay, so I'll I'll save you some that. Yep. A little bit of copy and paste and boilerplate, but yeah. The other warrant article we have is the one for authorizing general editorial changes. And I ran that by council, and surprising to me, council said that's perfect. Yep. Which either means I actually did it, or we, because you guys helped to draft that language, we either actually did a remarkably good job, or council just would take anything. <laughs> I'd like to think the council actually looked at the substance of that and said, in her view, that works, that accomplishes what we wanted to accomplish with it. So I think we're pretty much, we can expect to be good to go with all of our warrant articles by the end of our next meeting next week. Which is really our, our very last opportunity to do that anyway, yeah. unless you guys want to hold the extra meetings over the weekend. No. Um, do we need somebody to run with a uh, draft of Article 20 with some of what Craig sent out or anything else from there? Um, <clears throat> we, with, with Article 20, with Articles 4, 20, and 26, um, I'm going uh, to take what we have. Um, and whenever we're done with Article 4 there, with Article 20, uh, you know, we'll go over Greg's, you know, Greg's comments on that, and, and I'll, you know, I'll put something in for Article 20, and we'll, I'll take the correct version of 26 and put that into the document here. Possibly, we'll be revising those at our next meeting, after, after we review that, if we have any further tweaks to those three articles. Well, we, we can do that at the next meeting. Uh, worst case, that means I'm going to be editing the committee report and the draft warrant articles, make sure that they match up. <laughs> uh, that with just three articles to deal with there, and 20, we're not going to be doing anything major in any case. We're looking, we're not we're not interested in doing anything more than one or two minor changes, just so we can have something in there for Article 20 that we're changing. But uh, yeah, we should be. We've got everything else wrapped up here. We can wrap the last bit of it up next week and basically consider our work done. Um, following the close of the warrant on the 19th, I understand we are scheduled to, the Finance Committee has hearings on the warrant scheduled for the 20th, 21st, and 25th. Yep. And the bylaws are possibly going to come up on the 20th. If, if not all done on the 20th, they'll be done on the 21st. Um, Amber was asking me this afternoon who on the committee might be going to those hearings. And it occurs to me that there's a virtual certainty that we will have a quorum of the committee at those. At those <laughs> yeah. So I intend to be there, and two of us are on the finance committee. So we will have a quorum of the committee. The only question is whether Andy and Brian are going to be, they're going to plan to attend one or both of those evenings. Yeah, I plan on being there those two nights. I have a conflict on the 25th. So if we're done the 21st, yeah. that's, I have a conflict on the 25th too. Yeah. The planning board is going to be holding public hearings on the zoning warrant articles yeah. on the 25th. So after the public hearing that we have on them. Yes. <laughs> so the 20th, the meeting on the 20th will be an A. Uh, the meeting on the 21st and the 25th will be an F. We will uh, will be set up to use the OWL, and uh, GCTV will be recording from the room 
for posting. Um, we FinCom technically has uh, priority over the other two boards for A, but uh, ZBA has a draft decision on 59 Pleasant Street that night. So Evan felt that there'd be more public participation there and said, okay, fine, we're good with that. Um, one suggestion I received was since we had people that were assigned to work on different warrant articles that if there were questions about the warrant articles, the people who worked on them would probably be the best ones to uh, comment on them. So both during the warrant review and during town meeting, if, if they're available. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me, sir, at least for um, for the, the public hearings, I think. I'd be open to streamlining that for town meeting. Yeah. So hopefully, everything flies by in the in the consent motion, and, and we're not even talking about it. But um, if it makes more sense to kind of more streamline things and um, town meeting and, and designate Dave or or you know who's on the I'm finding the way. Oh, but. Skip, Skip and I will be up on the stage yeah. and for that, and every, anyone else would be down in the audience. We go into an audience like. So if Skip or I would comment, we, we could either comment from the FinCom mic or from the uh, stay up to the podium. The podium mic, but, yeah, yeah. I, I can't picture anybody having a whole lot of problem with a lot of this. I think what's going to happen yeah. is people's eyes are going to glaze over after they read mm -hmm. the first two pages of yeah. that board and say, yeah. "So they looked at this stuff, found a bunch of stuff that really should have been fixed or needed to be fixed, and they." Done a great job of looking at it, so we'll go and vote for it. That's our meeting. Uh, oh, just for everyone's information, there are about 15 other articles for the warrant, as that's that's the count we've been given so far. Seven different town boards uh, have brought them, and no citizens' petitions this time. So, yeah, of those 15, about half of them are planning board. Yeah. Andy, would you expect to be at the FinCon hearings on 20th and 21st? Yeah, I can be. I mean, really, I think it would only be me impressive for the 20th if you're doing the first half of the articles in. Um, but I can I can be available for those. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to depend on how long it takes to get through the first 15 articles or so. And if there's time, we will continue on the, the bylaw. We'll start on the bylaw article. So the, the other ones that all the other committees are there for are going to be first. And that was Amber's suggestion. And I was going to suggest the same thing. So yeah, get them get them out of the way first and get it before we get to the the other forty five. <laughs> that works. Yeah. yeah, and if either of us happen to fall asleep, <laughs> we should be able to be a dispensation for that after yeah. having sat through all these meetings. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to being able to say we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. Well. It'll be nice if it starts out at 150 pages and it goes to 120. Yeah, well, the uh, well, I, right I, now the committee report is at 1,559 pages, and that's without the 13 pages of Article 20. The warrant won't be that long. Right. But, <laughs> you know, I, I said to Greg, it's what clients I'd be in 2020. If, after sitting through this, I think I would have started out a little differently, just in the context of taking the charter and looking at it and looking at the bylaws and really just gone down the list and said, out, 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 out. You know, instead of, unfortunately, we spent a lot of time looking at stuff and then finally said, you know what, this is over there. We really don't even need this. You know, just to have saved some time and mental energy of doing it. Remember that for the next bylaw review committee. We'll put you on it. <laughs> no, for the next time we do the charter. Yeah, that's so. three years. Yeah. yeah. So, like in this report, the charter the charter revisions is eleven pages. We can we should be able to do the warrant in two. So, yeah, I don't think it'll be big deal. It's big. Alrighty. So we're let's see where are we at on the. Warrant articles for time being, we've got that covered fine for time being. We're covered for the moment. You know, we'll, at some point, we'll have to, it, we'll, we'll, we'll think about what we need to put together, if anything, for a presentation for slides or whatever, PowerPoints for time meeting. 
Yeah. You know, if I was you, I just put the report together for a PowerPoint presentation. It's going to be the easiest way to go through it and reference anything because you'll be able to just scroll through to whatever section with our, you know, with the little ditty thing, we should be able to yeah, so you know, take care of it. So yeah. for each, right. So for each bylaw article, we have this box up top summarizing what we did in that bylaw article. You can just extract that and put yeah. it in the PowerPoint. Yeah. So by lacking any other you know, any further thought about that, that's what we'll plan on. Yeah, I Dave, I, I don't even know that I would go to that point or just put the report as the PowerPoint and not really do a presentation of anything, but just have it should people start asking questions about the different parts, you can go right to that page and then get up and talk to it. And I think it'd be easier for William if it's in the the, the PowerPoint deck for the for the meeting, because they'll already have that and they just need to go to the Yeah. The yeah, and he, he, he could just say, William, go to, and you'll have the thing right there. Say, oh, go to slide number 78. The whole 150 and, pages. Yeah, but he's going to be able to work that thing yeah. so that if he could, you know, oh, okay, we've got to go to page 78. Found, found. I, I've never done one of those. That's that yeah, whole that's, PowerPoint presentation was passed me by the need to even know about any of that stuff. Yeah, doing, doing that in PowerPoint could be problematic. Okay. One, one, I, I, you, know, you can set up a PowerPoint deck to where you've got like an index page you can click to navigate to the page you want. Um, that, that could be done. Um, putting the entire report, in, and that is every bylaw article starting with the summary of changes and the, the entire text of the bylaw article, for presentation on a big screen, that might not work. Okay, that, but that wouldn't work out too well. Okay, yeah. I, I think the like the the box is probably yeah. good enough. But that, yeah, I mean, you know, we we might because the well, the because box they'll have, would, they'll have the text changes in the warrant, the warrant just and then you'll the, have the box to be able to. The box should handle any questions anybody's going to have with any of this stuff. Yeah, really, it should. Yeah, and we could even contemplate. Sort of one or two introductory slides, basically, sort of like a, a, an executive summary of the executive summary. Yeah. Here, 25 words or less is what we did. Yeah, I'd say in line with, if not even maybe a little bit more brief than um, than the presentation that you made at, at Spring Town. Right. Um, just kind of summary of the work. No, right. The, the, the presentation at Spring Town meeting was. Partly saying here's what we're doing, yeah. and partly saying this is this has been our progress today, and this is what we're going to do. And that, that part we're all done with. Yeah, it's just yeah. Here, here's what we set out to do, and here are the highlights of the just the, the real high highlights of of what we did. And before we kind of make any assumptions on our own about what might be easiest for for William, I, I still think if if he's not going to have an issue tog toggling between files, just having the committee's report handy in the hopefully unlikely event that we need to dive into the detail on, on any individual articles. Um, to me, that's the cleanest and best presentation, just to be able to pull that up, go to the article that, that's in question. You know, you've got the highlighted text, you've got the, the boxes, and it saves somebody the effort of having to copy all those boxes into PowerPoint slides. But if he's worried about having to toggle between the two files, then yeah, I think putting those boxes in a PowerPoint is probably the next best option. I don't want to send somebody through that effort. If yeah. I, I think the next step's a conversation with William. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're probably at the point of all of us deferring to whatever his preference is for him. Yeah. Yeah, that way when he messes it up, you can't say, look, it was you guys. In the 50 slides of PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to uh, take that report, 
part five of that report, really just the bylaw changes. If you're going to take that and format it for display on a screen, so first of all, it's it's published in portrait format. You would be publishing in landscape yeah. format. You would want the, the the type to be large enough to be readable on the screen. So it would probably run to potentially several hundred pages of PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. could be done. That's that's not an option. If, if he needs it in PowerPoint, I think we we default to the boxes, if anything. Yeah, but, yeah. and you're not going to display it on the screen in any form other than PowerPoint if you want people to read it. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, yeah, I don't know how he shares the, the screen or displays the presentation. To me, I mean, just toggling and opening up the PDF and, and being able to zoom and play with it um, shouldn't be that big of an ask, but if I haven't worked with whatever their setup is going to be for the meeting. He's going to have to have a slide per article anyways, so having the box as the next slide yeah. just for if there are any, if they need to talk about it, yeah. should be. I mean, we can we, we we can talk with William and Evan yep. and Don about whether it would make any sense to have the whole the full text available for display in the screen somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't see it being re readable. No, if you want if you want to if you want the audience to be able to read it. It's got to be pretty, pretty large print on the screen. Yeah, I, yeah, you can't put a whole lot on the screen and still have it readable. I, yeah, I, I cringe every time someone puts up a a, 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 a page, a chart, or a table, or something that's got you know, you know a couple of dozen rows and a couple of so dozen columns. Yeah. The, the combination of the Warren articles and this, the boxes should be fine. It's going to get the same information out there. And we we will probably arrange to have handouts, printed copies of the committee report, available for people to pick up at town meeting and read. I found the the deleted sec sections at the end of the article in CPC Ah, as we deleted severability and effective date at the I end. I know I had one somewhere. I know I remembered seeing one somewhere. I just happened to see it as I was scrolling through. The so, yeah, the severability clauses in several places. Yes, we're at the end. Yeah, yeah. If I deleted I deleted severability clauses wherever I found them. And I didn't, I didn't, when they were at the end of the article, I didn't take care to preserve the section number. Oh, so I see. You're throwing that around our collective necks for having made the decision to remove sections, which we knew nothing about being removed. Hmm. I agree for consistency, we should. And I'll yeah. get every deleted section. We really didn't. We didn't quite drill down to that level of clarity in our previous discussions. Yeah. Yeah. There, there may be others that I didn't. When I was deleting severability clauses, most of them occurred at the yeah. very end of the bylaw article, and I didn't necessarily take care to preserve the section number. Yeah, scenic roads, right? right. We deleted section eight severability and then added section eight enforcement. So, yeah, we actually did reuse the article number. We there. reused the article number there. The section number, sorry. Section number, yes. And we covered everything we need to cover this yep. evening. We covered everything I had on my list. And there were no minutes, right? No right. minutes. Or somebody somebody it. chose to spend more time reviewing the substance of the yep. uh, bylaw changes than they did uh, reviewing the tape to write minutes. That's true. Plus, the tape didn't get to Brian early enough. That's I mean, fine. I sent it off. I'm fine with any number of excuses. It was only a week. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> it was a week and a holiday weekend. So, yeah, hey. Holiday weekend. It didn't happen. Yeah, I, I sent I sent the recording off to Bob to tell him on Friday morning, and he didn't even acknowledge receipt until Tuesday. But some people felt like they needed to take a holiday weekend and have a holiday or something. <laughs> I don't understand that. Yeah, I feel like Greg's being mighty generous over there. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Well, if there's nothing else for tonight, we've got our work cut out for us for next meeting. And at the end of next meeting, we need to be able to say, we're, we've got everything lined up. Here's the warrant. All we have left to do is the hearings on the warrant, your preparation for town meeting, and town meeting itself. I can drag things out Tuesday night if you need those last few minutes. Just pick a topic to ramble on or whatever, and you know, buy you an extra half hour or so <laughs> we need to wrap things up. <clears throat> Getting real close to being good to go here. We're good to go for now. I think we've got our marching orders for next week. And we don't have much work left in front of us. I like that. So with that, I suspect a motion to adjourn might be in a way. Moved. Second. <laughs> moved and seconded that this meeting be adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? On a ballot vote. Hearing, you know, <laughs> so we are done. Do we?